What is CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility? Just to summarize, the fact that a company meets the expectations expressed by society, this form of responsibility, there are several forms, but this form started a long time ago. I'll give you an example of a remarkable case where responsibility emerged, what was called industrial paternalism in the 19th century. Some companies, employers, gave their workers some benefits, social benefits, which at the time went from the cradle to the grave. We have a very good example in France with the company Michelin. At the time between the two wars, Michelin would give the workers houses with water and electricity, sent their children to school, created two boarding schools, a maternity ward, a sanatorium, sports associations, and all the benefits given by the employer to his employees, because the state did nothing at the time, covered a number of functions. First of all, make the workers more loyal and stable. If they went, if the workers went elsewhere, they would not get so many benefits. And also, it was a way to uh, check the way the people behaved. If one worker started drinking excessively, he would lose his benefits. If a uh, female worker ended up being pre pregnant uh, without being married, she would lose her benefits. So it was a way to check how the workers behaved, and it was also a way to educate them for some, for some employers. There is also something else remarkable, if you consider that this happened in the 19th century. Employers usually also ran for local elections, so it was a way to control who voted for them. Now, this form of uh, corporate responsibility disappeared when uh, the welfare state appeared after the Second World War. It took a while, several years, about 30 years, for the matter of uh, corporate responsibility to emerge again under a different perspective. In the 70s, it was pr criticized as being too expensive, etc. And then there were the first uh, environmental disasters, Story Canyon 1967, Cerezo 1976, Amoco Cadiz in 1978. All these uh, environmental disasters raised a question, something very important for the populations. What are companies doing? Why can such situations develop without the companies doing anything? How? Why how is it that companies allow their equipment to be so damaged that this end up with the uh, environmental disaster? But there have been also scandals which uh, gave a different twist to the question of uh, corporate responsibility. The first one was the Goodrich scandal, 1968, about frauds being conducted in the laboratories, testing braking system, which were supposed to equip planes in the American Air Force. Obviously, a fraud in the uh, braking system means that uh, the pilot's life is at stake. But what matters here is that it was not simply the uh, employer whose responsibility was engaged. The whole system was uh, pointed uh, out and singled out because the checks were not performed correctly, so it was a matter of corporate uh, culture. The second scandal was the Ermenonville catastrophe. A plane took off from Paris and a few minutes later crashed in the Ermenonville forest and killed all the people on board. Again, the company's responsibility was uh, pointed out here. It was McDonnell Douglas in 1974. The company was being blamed for not having conducted rigorously the liability systems regarding door closing systems. Again, the employer was not pointed out. It was the company itself because it apparently allowed people not to work correctly in the laboratories checking safety systems, meaning that people could work in a very relaxed way without being blamed or without being sanctioned, except that in this case people died. So these two scandals, these two case studies, showed again that it wasn't the employer himself, the boss who was pointed out. It was the whole structure 
with the, in the 90s a new form of responsibility emerged whereby companies again were being uh, singled out but not as an organization, as a person. They became personified and the personification was due to globalization, to the fact that companies became global and the same company could be found in different places in different countries. So the faulty systems are blamed in the company, except that it's not the system itself that is blamed. It's the whole company named so-and-so. Because the company is a global company, therefore it should shoulder more responsibilities. An employer current started talking about a citizen company in a globalized world where companies no longer belong to a state. They are asked to start behaving again like citizens of countries across the world versus global populations. In the end, this diversity in origin leads us to think about Corporate responsibility has uh, having multiple facets. Are we talking about the uh, employer's responsibility as in industrial paternalism in the 20th, 19th and 20th century? Are we talking about the responsibility of the company's culture, the managerial system in the company rather than the company itself? Or are we talking about responsibility and liability of a personified company in a globalized world? So if we think about the various forms of uh, liability or responsibility, what exactly do we expect? Well, we expect the company to behave in a responsible way, an accountable way, versus the population's expectations.